for today's topic the S Man SM 480V. If you've seen my video several months ago on the S Man 460V when I did a rebuild, well, this one's the 480V. This one's a brand new one. So, on this one here, if you've seen the last from last week, I did a couple of videos on testing and like commissioning this in, testing hoses on it, testing it under vacuum. And I'm still going through that process because the vacuum could not hold far enough. Now, this is one of the best manifolds on the market out of all the manifolds that I've used over the last few decades. Uh, and especially the newer digital ones and I have the testos and I have this and I've had I've had testos all the way from their very first digital testo is like 20 years ago with really old software that was like d -based software uh, really archaic um, but on this testo we're trying to get it to hold a deeper vacuum and so this is the process I go through this is a uh, dielectric grease. It's just a silicone grease, spark plug boot grease, as you can see it there, splugin out. And I'm only gonna show you on one of the valves because there's no need for you to watch me go through all four valves, repeat over and over, but I'll just uh, explain everything to you. So what we have here is a complete valve taken apart. And here's a complete valve put together. And here's a complete valve where you'll see how I've where I put the silicone grease at. So our valves come apart like this. It screws up inside. It's threaded up inside there. These are on here. And then you have your knobs that'll go over that. Has one uh, number two Phillips in the center. It has a square shaft up in there. Everything is brass. These are your two grooves for your O-rings. Now I, I have noticed that clearances are tighter this time, I believe, or their O-rings, either they machined this different or they changed the O-rings. Something is different because this one held a better vacuum than any of the other ones that I've taken apart in the past and redone. And these were in there tight and they seem to have a little bit of lubricant on them, not a grease, but actually a little lubricant where before I've taken some apart were nearly dry. So that has changed and maybe that's one of the reasons it did hold such a, a pretty decent vacuum this time. But what I do is I take this groove that the O-ring sits in, Let's see if I could manip manipulate this with my gloves on. So that groove right there gets filled with lubricant. And if we come over here, if you look closely, that groove is filled. It's actually filled to the top with lubricant. Then I also fill, let's get that off of there. This stuff is sticky. This stuff is like nylog. It's kind of messy. So these right here, these little uh, grooves right here, the, I mean the threads right there. I fill those threads with a little bit of um, silicone grease. I fill the thread and the groove up there. If you see this little recess right here, see that little recess right there? I also fill this, I like to, I like to put silicone everywhere even if it's not necessary. The more the better, <laughs> one of those kind. Usually more is not better, but this is one of the, even if they think it's not necessary, so your leakage pass would be past these O-rings right here for any vacuum. And the cylinder right here, that's the cylinder your O-rings ride up and down on. So your O-rings are right up down there and your refrigerant passage, this little indent right, let's see if I could get it. This little indent right here is your refrigerant passage. And this is tapered down. It's not fully bored. If you look at it from the side, this seems a little smaller than this up here. This is your refrigerant passage. And this is your seal that bottoms off. And, you, and this is right, that little ring you see going around, that little groove, that was flat. Well, this is your sealing surface. And that's a nylon. They used to be Teflon, but it get damaged too easy. Nylon's a little tougher. Doesn't seal as well. It seals as good, 
but it doesn't seal as good with less pressure but everybody over torqued them and damaged them and under vacuum sometimes this would not hold this little crimp how they smash it over to hold this little disc of uh, nylon in there this little disc would not hold teflon because teflon's soft and you would have a good deep vacuum and have a good seal and when you would go to open up your valve and back it off the teflon would actually stay sealed inside and uh, come out of the bore right here so that is that and then let's see if I could see with this light you could see the refrigerant passage okay so you see that hole right there I'm sticking my uh, toothpick in the hole that's a refrigerant passage that refrigerant passage and this little area right in here and here's where the refrigerant goes down inside down in here this is your manifold that's drilled out inside but that little hole there is your hole that goes through your stem so your passage could come out so your refrigerant could come out here so since I don't have to show you everything let me take this back I'm going to just show you one since I already have the o-rings installed with silicone grease and that's grease not silicone the kind I get that you put in your bathtub to seal tile this is silicone grease dielectric grease uh, under high vacuum situations in laboratories they use silicone grease to seal two flat surfaces together to seal extremely deep vacuum but under really deep vacuum they don't even use silicone because even silicone outgasses and leaks under the extreme most deepest vacuums they use metal gaskets stainless steel usually other metals they can't even use zinc copper or lead because even those outgas it, believe it or not metals outgas but we're talking about vacuums so deep you the kind of vacuum pumps we use don't go that deep we're talking a uh, an order of magnitude uh, a hundred times the order of magnitude to the deepest vacuums we're able to get even with our best rotary vane two stage oil uh, submerged oil pumps uh, going into a whole different ball vein you're getting into molecular and uh, molecule type vacuum pumps that actually pull out one molecule of gas at a time when you get down to those kind of deep vacuums it's a very interesting science um, so let's see let's take this you already see that I have there's the threads that you could see around in here and you see I got a little silicone grease in there now you don't want to get the silicone grease down in really your bore axis you don't want it getting inside your system you don't want it to get potentially on your up in the little slot in the hole of your micron gauge you wouldn't want that contamination down there I'm just let's get it in there okay. oops I know what I forgot to do uh, what I'm gonna have to do for this is not touch my phone with these fingers but I'm gonna mount it in my tripod right there and um, oh I know there's something another interesting things if you ever wondered if you have your iPhone and you had external batteries or small battery packs and you have different cords and or you have an iPad or something and you want to know if your charger was working right or your battery was actually putting out like this is a 20,000 uh, uh, milliamp rated battery pack and on my phone here I usually have another battery pack this is a battery pack and it saves my phone for dropping this is a 8,000 milliamp battery pack as you can see and you slip your phone inside of here and that goes up in your charging port and you got another 8,000 hours you usually could make it to like midnight with one of these things on unless you're me and use it a little, way too much then I have to have this plugged in several times a day and uh, that's 20,000 milliamp hours and you could take something like this and you can check when you buy cheap cords if you don't buy OEM cords you could tell how much the cord how much voltage drop and amp drop you got through a cord you could put one on the inlet put one on the outlet and you can actually measure the cord drop 
and you could run down your batteries and check the amp hours of your batteries to see how they're doing for their end of life. So here goes like this, plug it in, getting off topic here, sorry about that guys. Uh, but some guys might be into their iPhones and iPads and would like to know, here I'm drawing one amp to charge up my battery right now at 9.4.962 volts. And um, a lot of things. This is by this uh, company called Raiden. Uh, this is a little load tester by them. Here's some other uh, type C tester. Uh, this is their DC power supply, like a bench power supply. Uh, that you make yourself, you know, put it together in a case. But the company, let's see, you could find them right, right, R U I D E N G. Uh, for you guys who are into your Apple phones and iPads and stuff like that, and charging cords and bigger batteries and battery cases, that'll be up your aisle. Sorry for going off topic here, but let's get back into. Uh, setting this up and get not getting my hands silicone all over my tripod here so i'll set up the tripod if i don't kill the phone battery come on i don't do editing so and this one ah there we go there we go so we'll hold that there back this down well, what, what I'm doing here is I'm pulling the little barrel that's attached down there up far enough back into here you can see I'm making a mess okay so now I should have it all the way backed up. Sure. No pressure. Okay. Back it up backwards so you could feel the thread fall in. There we go. I just felt it fall in. Now I could go in the right direction. And that's all to it. There's uh it is not rocket science. Let me make sure that I have this all backed in, backed out. Yeah. Make sure it's working good. Yep. This is what I've been doing to all my manifold gauges as soon as I get them out of the box. Because they do not hold vacuum. And you do not supposed to you're not supposed to use a vacuum manifold to pull deep vacuums and do a vacuum decay test because there's too many leak points and you're using rubber hoses. So you would not want to do that in the first place. So I'm just letting you know that in case somebody says, oh, but he said uh, you could use these for vacuum decay tests. No, manifolds are not meant for really doing deep vacuum decay tests. You want a separate micron meter located in the farthest point of your system, if possible, or a shut off isolation tool that you can shut off your manifold and isolate your micron gauge that you've seen in some of my other videos where I isolate the micron gauge on like one of the Appian or Yellow Jacket or Ritchie uh, valve core removing tools. And that is what you want to use. But if you can't afford to buy two pieces of tools, you know, buying a good vacuum micron gauge and a good manifold, this has a micron gauge, gauge built in. And this will teach you somewhat how to use 
a micron gauge so you get the best of both worlds in one tool until you can finally afford or get one or decide to get one a micron gauge okay that's it i didn't go too gung-ho i didn't put a big old giant 12 incher on there just this little tiny six incher and this stuff like i said before it's not as bad as nylog but almost as bad as nylog so you want to clean it off as much as possible because it will attract dust and make your gauges look uh dirty in a shorter amount of time because you'll have silicone grease over everything wanting to attract dust it is good at waterproofing <laughs> and so that was it that was not complicated now i'll go through the same process and i'll walk oh yeah and when you take the rubber o-rings off don't use sharp metal items use a toothpick and kind of roll it off there and pop them off i'm sorry i'm not showing you uh, how to roll the o-rings off of there but here's one putting one back on so i'll have the o-ring just rolling it around boom it just popped back in there get the other o-ring come from the other side roll it my fingers are so slippery there pop it up boom there just fell into the other one so now i have both o-rings there's absolutely no possibility of any air being pulled under a deep vacuum behind the o-ring because it's completely filled with silicone grease and i put another layer of silicone grease over these o-rings so there's something built up in between and behind and as it goes up and down there's always silicone grease behind the o-rings built up so there's no chance of any leakage going past these o-rings and that's my method of getting my gauges ready to go out on the field and do what I'm not supposed to do. And that sometimes in the real world, you don't always break out your micron gauge and test with your micron gauge. So you want the best chance you have at the tool you have available to you to not fail a vacuum decay leak test. And that's what we're striving for. If you looked at my other videos, you've seen as I went through different steps, how I lost vacuum decay. And especially once I hooked up hoses, how I lost amount of vacuum. And now I'll make another video after this showing I'll pull a vacuum on here and you'll get to see possibly how much farther down this set of gauges can pull vacuum in microns than it did in one of my earlier videos. That's the progression as I go along to keep getting deeper and deeper in vacuum without leaking, no decay, or very little decay, acceptable decay. The only way you have no decay is by, or almost no decay, is by not using manifold gauges and don't use rubber hoses, but use soft copper lines as your vacuum hoses. That's your least amount of decay. That's it for now. I think we are uh, pretty good here on this. Silicone grease, dialectic grease. They actually sell from shops that specialize in vacuum, special vacuum under brand names. Uh, it's been dehydrated and under laboratory circumstances, and even this is considered wet, this uh, grease outgasses. And you would put your silicone grease in a vacuum chamber and draw a vacuum on your silicone grease to remove the moisture out of your silicone grease before you use it. But that's only, that's not in our industry, that's for laboratory type of work. And uh, you can pay $100 for a little three ounce thing of special, you know, bells and whistles, silicone grease that's been certified and has documentation by a scientific laboratory for use in scientific research. It was a ludicrous amount of money. Just get something like this. We're only in automotive or commercial HVAC. That's more than enough. We went long enough here. See you guys until you'll see the next video after this when I put it together.